There's a lot of red, there's a lot of purple in the crowd. And we're set to go. Audra Wilmes right back into the lineup. She had missed the last five matches with injury. So awesome. Always nice with a big crowd, a lot of energy. You're playing one of the best teams in the country to get that first side out, first kill. Great start for Washington. When Wilmes is healthy, she's typically one of the better servers on the team. And a team full of really good servers. One handed nice set by Molly Wilson. That's kept up by Rebecca Alec. Katie Wessels is down for a Washington kill. Washington in the last few matches has done such a great job of getting their middles involved both in server receive and transition. And if you're setting quicks and trans and getting kills, that's a good sign you're playing some good volleyball. John Cook has challenged the call. The original decision is touch point Washington. Nebraska is challenging that there was no touch on the play. That's our R2, Devaney McClarty. Ronald Pelham is in the stand, the R1. Robin Buckholder and Jennifer McIntosh are the line judges. The block touch call is being reviewed. Every point matters. I love the early challenge. Why not? Yeah, John Cook, he actually had a couple of challenges early in the Oregon match, which took place on Thursday. Nebraska taking their first tour in the Big Ten of the Pacific Northwest, and they swept Oregon 3-0. Pretty resounding victory, just a close second set, but otherwise a dominant effort for Nebraska against the Ducks, and that set an attendance record of over 8,000 people in Matthew Knight Arena, and they set an attendance record here. We're waiting for the final number tonight. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, such a historic program and what they stand for, and they come from really the heartbeat of volleyball in the U.S., so it's cool that they're getting these huge crowds. Trying to find ourselves a look that will indicate whether there was a block touch. The call on the court was block touch, point Washington. Ooh, or maybe a touch there, point Washington. Yeah. Ooh, or maybe a touch there, point Washington. Yeah. I think is the point of contention. Did Berg and Riley touch it? No touch. Nebraska will win the point and retain their challenge. You get two challenges in NCAA volleyball until the fifth set and you get an extra. I don't know John Cook's... Uh, percentage of challenges he wins, but I feel like he has a knack for just knowing when they want to challenge that thing. Hey, whether it's winning challenges or winning matches, they yeah. they just win. So instead of 2-0, it's 1-1. Nebraska retains the challenge. And Olivia Malk is the server. Bush had a great day at Minnesota. She matched a career high with 19 kills. Yeah, she's taking some tough swings this year, and you love to see that early from Washington. The pass is a little bit towards position four and low. She keeps her hitter in rhythm. Great set by Molly Wilson. Warren Bays back to serve. She serves short. And Merritt Beeson. Evens the score early in the first. Now, Beeson is such a fun athlete to watch, and I, when you have a great opposite, it really opens up the whole offense. You're able to, to mix it around. The blockers never know which way they need to go. There's really no weaknesses that are evident on this Nebraska team all the way across the net and in the back row. So much quality across the board, but Washington has been trending in the right direction lately. Hugh Fletcher, South Carolina transfer on the right side for the Huskies. Yeah, great high swing by Fletcher. They're going to need to keep doing that versus Nebraska, one of the best blocking and defensive teams in the country, taking those high swings off the hands. Now maybe the biggest matchup, Courtney, of all today is the Washington serve against the Nebraska serve receive. I think you just jinxed them right there. <laughs> As we do. Yeah, you know, Nebraska's so good and so well balanced offensively, and uh, Bergen Riley does such a good job mixing it up that Washington needs to serve tough to make them a little more one dimensional. 
Huskies coming off a season tough to make them a little more one dimensional. Huskies coming off a season high 13 aces against Minnesota. Nebraska, the toughest team to ace in the country. Beeson serving now for the Cornhuskers. Kept in by Wilson and setting Bush. What a play by Molly Wilson, the redshirt junior setter. Wow. Great hustle by Wilson. At this point, you got no option other than to try to help your teammate get a swing. That's an, a really high level play on a tough first contact. She gets credit for a save and an assist in one motion. In system here, Riley to Andy Jackson, who has been a little bit more error prone lately. One of the best percentage hitters in the country. Head coach for the Huskies, Leslie Gabriel, in her second year. She was an assistant coach on that 2005 national title winning team against Nebraska. Yeah, two has been such a, the heartbeat of this program for decades now and really just represents all the good that this program's about. Harper Murray pulls the string, and that's a point for Nebraska. You call her Tui. Yes. Right? <laughs> Leslie Tui, that's a soap that was her maiden that's name. Right. Now Gabriel. Yeah, sorry, I'm going in the throwback there. Well, that's her, that's her nickname, but you know, right. people got to know, right? Tui Asasopo family, a really famous family in Seattle and University of Washington lore. As Harper Murray is the server. Julia Hunt, great freshman middle on the slide. It's dug by Rodriguez right back onto the Husky side. Wilmus right in the pocket of Rodriguez. On the pick, Murray. Amazing digs, and this is what Nebraska does. They just put pressure on you and make you earn these points. Three-time National Coach of the Year, John Cook. Taken Nebraska to six Final Fours in the last nine seasons. How difficult is it for Washington coming in without Barton or Ensley, their top two outsides to start the season? Yeah, I think it's tough for any team, but what stands out to me is that they've they've had injuries. They've had, you know, had to rotate in outside hitters, and they keep showing up, keep competing, and it's a testament to how well they train day to day. Showing their depth with Bush and Wilmus in there. Wilmus just had the kill. Cross-court land fair in there. Wilmus just had the kill. Cross-court land fair. Defense. Landfair is such a, a great hitter to watch. She's so athletic. You just see the point of contact, how high she gets this thing. It allows her to hit with so many different angles that not many athletes in the country can do. Pretty nice luxury to have. And you have Harper Murray along with Landfair and Lindsey Krause on the outside. Landfair's been getting the playing time recently over Krause. Service missed by the serving specialist Kennedy Orr. Rodriguez comes back in, the three-time All-American libero defensively for Nebraska, and that is short. So, kind of the deal, though, too, when you're a server in this sport, you have to deal with some misses from time to time because the coaches want you to be aggressive. You have to deal with some misses from time to time because the coaches want you to be aggressive. Absolutely. It's always a balance of risk-reward, you know, and typically the best teams in the country hit it in around 90%. Uh, but also allows you to take enough risk to put pressure on the other team. And a team that's a good receiving team, a great receiving team like Nebraska, puts more pressure on the serve and creates more forced misses. Nice put down there by Fletcher. Washington hanging right with Nebraska in the early going. Yeah, both teams hitting hard, competing at this, you know, great digs, getting good swings out of system. Fletcher does a nice job of staying disciplined there. Audra Wilmis, second on Washington in aces per set last season. And she played in every single match for the Huskies. Rebecca Allen has a hitting error. It's 9-7. I like that throw in by Bergen Riley. That passes from position one, coming over your shoulder as a setter. That's not always easy. And she gets all the way around trying to get their middle going. Let's see if she repeats here. Rolled over by Lanfair. Fletcher into the hands and down. Washington expands the lead.
Yeah, Taylor Lanford wasn't able to get a clean swing on that, and such a great job by Fletcher here hitting those high hands. Merritt Beeson is such a physical blocker. Washington's doing a great job hitting those edges. Bush loading up. Go, Beth, go. Landfair hitting right side. Block touch controls the ball. Gives the offense an opportunity. Beeson. Yes for the Huskers. Yeah, Nebraska's so tough because they're not only big at the net, but they've got Lexi Rodriguez in the backcourt flying all around. And you'll see here, Beeson just takes a great shot down the line. She's facing the other sideline and comes cross body with that arm swing. That point ended a 3 0 Washington run. Ivani Bush switching from right side to left side because of the injuries performed very well at Minnesota. Hitting error right there. Nebraska within one. Bush has played both positions over the course of her career, by the way. Good pass by Wilmis. Fletcher dug by the setter. And Murray looking for contact gets it. Excellent defense by Riley and the finish by Murray. That's such a great swing by Murray. That ball's a little tight inside. She works hard to get her feet there and take a nice swing. Again, high hands. That's really tough to defend. Three straight for the Cornhuskers. Fletcher is roots. Alec and Murray. Alec making such a great read. You can notice when you watch the serve go over the net and she just stays steady. She's not jumping around. She's letting her eye work happen first so she can react quickly to the ball. And crush some dreams like she did there. Tight there, but Bush knew what to do with it. Just wipes it. It's called a white play where she just crushes it off the side of the block. That's right. That wasn't a big thing back in the day when I played, and now you see it more and more from these top teams of just getting there and not avoiding the block, but really just going at it. Using that block, getting it out of bounds off of those hands, earning the kill. Eric Beeson. Bays gets there. Wilmis tries to save. And a back and forth. First set. One of the things I love about watching Bergen Riley is she just has a, a such a good feel for the game and she keeps her hitters in rhythm. So you notice if the, the pass is high, if it's low, if it's in a different position, she has a way of keeping that same tempo and let her hitters do the work. How do you find that consistency from different passes? You mentioned the tempo. Imani Bush kills one. How do you achieve that over, over time? Yeah, you know, it starts with eye work and good movement patterns. So if you're getting stopped and reading the pass, you're going to move efficiently. And then really it's consistent mechanics. So you notice Bergen Riley, she's so consistent in how she approaches the ball. Allows her sets to be consistent as well. Riley to Jackson. Throws that one down. I am so impressed with Andy Jackson. She's just one of those athletes that is a former setter. You watch her, you're like, man, I'd love to set her. You know, she's such a competitor. She works hard in transition, serve, receive, and super fun to watch. Second in the conference behind Taylor Schrammel in hitting percentage coming into the night. Fourth in the country. Jackson hitting 448. Again, Imani Bush trying to make something happen in a tough situation. Wasn't able to right there. And Nebraska keeps the serve. As the Gabriel, though, looking for an explanation. Looks like she was thinking about challenging that one. There was some conversation after that one, but no, no green challenge card came out. And so Beeson back to serve. It's a good serve put away by Riley, and that takes us to our first timeout of the first set. Nebraska on a run at the moment has grown some distance, 15-12. In the conference, Washington knows how to ace opponents, but Nebraska seems to 
handle everything that they get. They do. Nebraska's done a great job on these tough serves from Washington, just getting it up there around 10, 12 feet, and Bergen Riley's so good. She can keep running an offense, so it's working for Nebraska so far. Serve receive is just so underrated, so important. The top two least aced teams in the country entering the weekend, Nebraska and Pittsburgh, the top two teams, period, in the country. Coming off the timeout, Molly Wilson scores for the Huskies. Second ball over from the center. Molly Wilson, she's such a competitor. She's doing a great job keeping her hitters in rhythm, and every once in a while, you gotta take it in your own hands for a right in the donut. I haven't seen it much this year because the Huskies have run a 6-2 most of the season. This is the second match in a row they've gone to the 5-1. Part of that is the injuries with the pins. That's right, you need a, for a successful 6-2, obviously two setters that can keep your team in rhythm uh, and also enough opposites to make, make a splash there. But it's working for them. They're finding a way. They look good at Minnesota. On the slide, that's the middle going around to the right. Hunt is rejected, and Nebraska creating more separation. There's Andy Jackson again. Such a disciplined move. She's a little bit late to that because of Washington speed, and she just goes off of one, a little bit of a hybrid. That's what great blockers do. What do you mean by hybrid? Well, typically, if she had time, she would take a three-step block move there, and she just we had to cut it short and kind of fly through it, but it worked out for us. Taylor Landfair, a little bit strong on that one. You mentioned Nebraska's blocking prowess. I mean, they, they just do everything well, but both Jackson and Alec in the middle are well over one block per set. Really good number in the middle. There's just no obvious weakness. There's just no obvious weakness for the Cornhuskers. Julia Hunt had a... But Nebraska sides out quickly against Hunt. And that's what's tough. You finally get a good serve, get them in trouble on that first contact, but they're so physical. Taylor Lenfair finds a way to get a kill in that play. Serving specialist Kennedy Orr is in there, senior from Egan, Minnesota. She turned 22 years old on Thursday. And celebrated with that victory over Oregon. That is a D ball. A set to the right side behind the attack line, and Bush misses strong. Nebraska is up five. Timeout taken by Leslie Gabriel and Washington. The Huskers are on the move in the first set. Athletics anywhere. This is what sports is all about. And again, just so much respect for Nebraska drawing huge crowds everywhere. It's amazing to see for the sport of volleyball. Again, they set the record. Northwestern did three matches ago. Then last time out, Oregon set their attendance record. And now this will be an attendance record here, regardless at Washington. It's the first sellout in program history. That is contact up top, so a kill for Taylor Lanfair. Such and a great dig by Cho Boy on that flying around. She's so fun, athletic. Quick, uh, really love watching her play defense. Nebraska, Courtney has won eight of the last ten points. What have you seen differently in the second part of this set? Yeah, it looks like their serves heating up quite a bit. They're putting a lot of pressure on Washington, and if, especially against such a big block like Nebraska, if you're not getting really clean swings or have more than one option, you're going to get in trouble. Audra Wilmus pass to attack and rifles it down the line. We always love that when your outside hitter just tees off after getting picked on in the serving lane quite a bit. Tracy Rodriguez for Nebraska. Molly Wilson serving. You might notice Washington's block here, Wessels. She might take a step towards the outside here. But she's going to step in early. So it'll be interesting to see what Bergen Riley chooses to do. She goes outside Landfair. There was net contact, pretty obvious, on the Washington side. When you mentioned Nebraska's outsides, they have great hitters up and down the lineup, but Murray and Landfair went off against Oregon. 
Murray hit 414, Lanfair hit 407, both had double figure kills. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're so physical, they're such great players. Uh, they compete at a high level, but what makes it tough is just everyone from Nebraska is so good. But you never quite know where they're gonna go. Looks like Fletcher might have gotten a hit with a hand or the ball. Yeah, it was a net violation on Washington. Clearly an issue there for Fletcher. They're trying to sort out. And it looks like everything's all right. And that's the reason for the delay here in the first set, late in the first. Setter Bergen Riley serves in rotation one with the setter is the server. Wessels hits one hard into the floor. Wessels just quintessential Washington volleyball getting the quicks going on a good pass. You'll see it's a little bit slower than most middles, but it gives them enough time to kind of see the block and find some space. And that's why they do it, right? They slow it down a little bit just to give them that read. Landfair hits line from the right, and it's ruled in. Leslie Gabriel thinking about maybe challenging. She was looking at her assistants, but I don't think they're going to. I think that was the right choice. Nebraska, I would agree with you. Will serve. Once again, sophomore from Lewiston, Idaho, made the All-Pac-12 freshman team last year. Yeah, that's a great read on that pass by Wessels. Coming around from rotation two here. Just lobs it up there again. She's got space. She has time to kind of make a play on that ball. You're passing number And a sister. Murray doesn't care. Ooh, that one sounded a little different up here. How difficult is this to do? Let's listen to this. <laughs> Come on. It's, I mean, it's world class. She's world class and uh, such a great athlete. That was like that tee shot you hit that's just right down the middle. It sounds a little bit different. That contact was so pure by Murray from a difficult set as well. And now she does it a different way to give Nebraska set point. Right, sometimes you got to kill them with kindness, you know? And that's what makes a player like her tough. It's not just she can hit hard in all these different angles, but she's got off speed. She mixes depth really well. Really tough to defend. Oscars have closed strong in the first set. Bush is rejected. Jackson, Beeson were both there. And the Cornhuskers have a surge after it was close early in the first. Yeah, Washington putting up a good fight early, and then Nebraska does what Nebraska does. They just, they're great over time. They wear you down. Um, what a match, though, for this crowd tonight. Fun first set, but the Cornhuskers taking control late. Landview like Pittsburgh and Nebraska are a cut above the rest. And this, this might be a day that validates that after Penn State had issues. At Wisconsin, remember though, Nebraska last weekend of the regular season goes to Penn State. So we're looking forward to that one. Start of the second set. Rebecca Alec gets that one home. One nothing. Yeah, we talked about kills in the middle before, but it, it's the fastest play that happens, so there's less time to adjust as, from the hitter. So it's actually the hardest set in volleyball because it happens so fast. And again, Alec working hard in transition to create a huge window for her center. Bays calls for that set. Merritt Beeson had a strong first set. She was three for six in the first. Got dug there. In transition, Alec has two kills in a row to start the second set. Yeah, great work by Nebraska transitioning hard. It's tough as a blocker in transition. You're working so hard to be great at the pin. You got to get back to the middle. 
make a read and typically when there's a lot of hitters running at you the pass is coming towards you it's a lot harder to block i like able to find some space there so tough to do against the clean within their assignments harper murray is now six for six absolutely going off there's a feeling in volleyball if you get a tough dig like Le lexi rodriguez on this play and there's some time and your team's heating up your hitter just has all this momentum going and they're definitely feeling it now nebraska with that kill is up to 500 as a team 18 kills three errors in 30 attempts 500 for the cornhuskers Pretty solid stat line right there. Husky's in 158. Coach Gabriel also said she wants to see her team improve more defensively. Tough challenge against this Nebraska team. It's been Allen to start the second set. Yeah, you can tell Nebraska's trying to get them going, and obviously the pins have hit Murray, Landfart, and Beeson all hit over 300 in the first set. So it's nice that Nebraska's keeping it balanced, and that's what makes them so great. You know, they want to keep everybody in the offense so we can use whoever we need in front time. Their leading kill getter is that hits the top of the net and drops down. Harper Murray ranks 16th in the conference in kills, and she's their leader. So Nebraska extremely balanced, and they have Washington spread. Huskers. Yeah, there's just so many web balance. And then you want to make an emphasis either based on the opponent's weakness or who's hot that night. And there always is that balance too of finding chemistry on a team that's is that balance too of finding chemistry on a team that's Bergen Riley's spreading it out so well it probably really helps for team chemistry. Absolutely. Winning has a fun way of just kind of making everything okay, you know? And they've been winning. They're 23 and 1, coming off their national runner up last year. Hume Fletcher getting a swing, using the block, and siding out. A little bit of a delayed call there. These folks in the building not quite reacting to the call. Realizing now that there is a side out and a serve for Zoria Hurd, one of the defensive specialists. Transfer from Texas AM, Corpus Christi. Serves hard, but long. Serves hard, but long. Super high level, and they're hot right now. You need to get them in trouble, but it's tough if you're missing a lot. So let's see how Washington responds here. They have an ace yet. That was their fourth service in. They have an ace yet. That was their fourth service in. It's Jackson right behind the center. <laughs> that sounded a bit different too. So this is tough. She's an incredible hitter, and not only is she great in front of the center, but also behind, and she can move it around all the way to the pin, a little bit closer to the center. It is so tough to defend, and she hits so high. That was kind of that mid ball, right? Not yeah. really a back one, not really a slide. Yeah, and it kind of looks like both of them, so it's again, it's really tough to block. And that connection, as you said, it's been crisp. Bush kills right there, but <laughs> that Jackson shot, there's been a few on the Nebraska side that have just sounded different. Jackson shot, there's been a few on the Nebraska side that have just sounded different. I could not believe she was a freshman last year. And now, yeah, she's playing at such a high level, and she's going to be as good as she wants to be. Back row, Merritt Beeson. Wilson, Wilmus, Murray was right there reading its Wilson, Wilmus, Murray was right there reading its hit. Murray has to run around and attack the ball, and she does for the kill. Yeah, what a heads up play by Murray. What great hitters do is you, you work hard to get off the net, so when you approach, you're behind the ball, it allows you to see the defense. And you notice here, Murray's gonna eventually work hard in transition. Takes that ball, she's hustling out. It just makes a really smart shot. That's on the wrong side of the antenna, so it's a hitting error once again for the Huskies. Nebraska off to a huge start in the second. These are tough moments, and Leslie Gabriel talked about her team loves to compete they love to get after it and these are the moments where you kind of build your capacity 
Nebraska's hot. You guys making a lot of errors. How do they? How do they fight? How do they stay in it and try to get a little bit better here? Very short-handed as well. Without their top two outside hitters for the bulk of the season, will miss one of those fill-in players. She's been a great fill-in player over the last couple of years. Was never supposed to be a starter. Ensley got hurt. Will misses freshman year. She played right side. Last year filled in for Bush on the outside and right now filling you're sporting your teammates on the court You get called up and it tends to work out well for you. So a lot of credit to Will Miss There's that low flat serve by Julia Hunt had six aces at Minnesota Will Miss Net call that was going to be a Nebraska point but a net violation instead Let me take a look at the serving capacity for the Huskies. They were so good at Minnesota. Season high 13 errors. Most uh, 13 aces, excuse me. The most aces they've had against a conference opponent in a couple of years. And Hunt was the one who was really serving strong in particular. And this is right there. She wanted that one a bit. If you're going to miss, though, it's much better to miss past the end line. At least the passers have to make a decision. The worst miss you can have in volleyball is in the net. Washington passing with two right now. Bird takes it. Katie Wessels. That was Laney Showboy getting down there for the dig. And it's paid off by Lanfair. Now that's a sign of a high level team. Showboy's flying around, saving this ball. And they just keep making tough plays, making Washington earn it. Bergen Riley does an incredible job putting up a hit of a ball and a very tough dig. That's why they're the, one of the top teams in the country. Showboy, a sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina, was the number one libero recruit in her high school class. They have a freshman, Olivia Mount, who was the number two libero in her class. And neither of them is playing libero <laughs> for Nebraska. That's the job of Lexi Rodriguez. What a group of back row players for the Cornhuskers. And there's Showboy. Perfect dig. Black touch for the Huskies. D-ball attack for Bush. Kennedy Orr. Doesn't get there and a kill for Bush. What a great rally for Washington. And Bush hit that D behind. You don't see that too much in women's volleyball, especially in the college game where there's a lot more 6 twos than kind of the big opposites that you see on the men's side. But Washington going for it tonight, and you got to take some chances against a great team. Bush showing her versatility, playing on the outside but still hitting that shot. Riley Tilly playing on the outside but still hitting that shot. Riley. Yeah, again, there's so much balance in the offense that every once in a while, if that pass is somewhere where she's kind of in the middle of two blockers, it's a really efficient play for her to just throw it over there. That's a thousand tonight. Two for two tonight, 368 coming in. And serves, good serve, handled well by Lauren Bays. Will miss hits line, another miss. Point for the Cornhuskers. I mean, everywhere this team goes, Nebraska, they attract all of these fans. And in these road games, usually they uh, they have a knack for quieting the home crowd. <laughs> An ace by Riley. Seven match road winning streak coming in for Nebraska the list. It's incredible. It's a little bit of the Caitlin Clark effect, you know, and how fun for the sport of volleyball. And also it's one reason Nebraska is so good. They're just competing in these really tough environments, having to figure it out, unlock it against each team, and they've done a great job so far. If you're Washington in this type of situation, of course, it's going to be tough to come back and win this set, but how do you mentally try and build yourself back up? Yeah, they got to regain their composure somehow, and really it's just getting back to good. You know, the, the challenge is that when you're down by this much, you want to get it all back in one play, but really we just got to... Washington just has to find their rhythm again one play at a time. As soon as serves, will help. That's the biggest medicine 
at Washington Health. That's one of the biggest medicine at Washington Wellness. Wellness. Causing issues. And push off the block and down. Well, you called it. We talked about Washington needed to serve tougher, and Wilmis got land fair on a short serve and took her out of the attempt. Wilmis got land fair on a short serve and took her out of the attempt. How tough is that short serve to execute? Yeah, it's it's tough because it, you know, it takes you out of your normal rhythm as a hitter, and especially if it causes you to kind of move the lane that you're in. Land fair makes up for it there. She tips one down. Big cushion for Nebraska in the second. I just love the range that Landfair plays with, you know? So many shots, it's so tough to stop. Without kill, Nebraska back up to 500 as a team. They've been flirting with it most of the match. Katie Wessels hits wide. 17-9. This will be interesting to see. I always like as a setter, when a hitter makes an error, you kind of want to go right back to him. However, Murray read that well, and there's two blockers in front of her, so we'll see what Molly Wilson does. Wilson, Fletcher. Setter takes the first one, so Rodriguez, nice back set with the bump. After the pancake by Wilson, Bush scores, and that's one of the first times that Murray hasn't scored on one of her swings. We got pancakes tonight. What an effort by Molly Wilson on that play. She's deep ready for that high hand shot, and she finds a way to get under it, give her team a chance. And then Washington takes a great swing. Bays, nice dig. Good reaction. Bays, nice dig. Good reaction by Hunt against Alec. Beeson finds the setter on purpose, so it's Bays, Bush, Malk, Riley, Harper, Murray. Alec reacts. Oh, a paintbrush attempt just gets over by Hunt. Murray found block contact. Like Washington might challenge that one. Oh no, maybe Hunt got it. Fletcher was saying no. One thing that makes Bergen Riley so good is she just puts up hittable balls. And great setters, like they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be good over time. Put that set in a place where her hitters can go do something with it. She's just so consistent. Spoken like someone who knows Courtney Thompson, former Husky legend. One of the all-time great setters in the sport. Along with AJ Cannell, so glad to have you with us for this sellout crowd. First ever volleyball sellout. You saw at the top of this segment, 9,768 in this building. All right, Seattle. Northwest showing up tonight. Of course, getting to watch one of the best teams in the country. We got the governor on the sideline, Jordan Larson. Got a chance to catch up with her for this match. Yeah, it's so cool to see her, you know, play at such a high level. The original decision is that the ball was touched and out. Bush likes to hit cross court. What a great angle. Notice great outside hitters. That pass is coming towards her, towards Bush, and she gets outside the court so she can still create that angle and hit that inside seam. Nice shot by her. She's from Campbell River, British Columbia. Didn't play last year, had shoulder surgery. It's really better as the season has gone along. Jackson smashed down. Wow. What a fun connection to watch. Bergen Riley does a great job on that tight pass. She gets to the net and goes. Bergen Riley does a great job on that tight pass. She gets to the net and goes straight up. Takes that super high. She can feed Andy Jackson. That is a high swing in the middle. Just hitting over everything. Good 
three defensively. Right off the block, back to Murray, beats the block down this time. And again, Murray doing such a great job of mixing up the depth of her shots, both hitting and when she's throwing in some off speed there. Nebraska does such a good job of digging off the net. You know, uh, you don't want to dig too tight. It's a tough thing to keep in rhythm, and your setter gets in trouble. And it just looks often like Bergen Riley's really comfortable getting set before she can before set. Murray now hitting nine for 13 with no errors. Double figure kills. She has it going. I mean, if your outside hitter is hitting over 700, you're having a pretty good night. She gets so deep in transition again, so she can stay behind this ball. She's hitting with great vision and just has a knack for finding the court tonight. A serve. Well, we are seeing everything. The Cornhuskers have to offer here in the second. It's fun to see them getting better and better, you know, and that's the sign of great teams too, is that it's not just about getting the W, it's how good can we be, what can we unlock tonight, how do we get a little bit better every day, and John Cook exudes that in everything he does. Yeah, we were trying to press him a little bit and say, what, but what are you really focused on? What do you really need to improve? He doesn't really like to say much in, in, in that regard. Oh, we work on everything. I mean, it, yeah. but, it's, but it's true. You know it's true. Oh, yeah. I know that one made me laugh a little bit. I was like, come on, give us some. Rodriguez with the read. Jackson hammers off hands. Beeson digs nicely. Here is Murray. Picked herself off the ground and hit that over. Everything Murray touches. Hit that over. Everything Murray touches turns into a kill. 11th kill on 16 swings for the sophomore Harper Murray. Yeah, Nebraska just playing lights out right now. They're, they're getting better as they go, and Washington's going to need to find their rhythm again and just keep competing, see if they can show up a little bit here at set three. Athletics, when you get to compete at these these amazing moments and you get to be a part of a community. All sweet. Match versus UCLA right before the tournament, and uh, it lit a fire a little bit. And again, similar to how it feels Nebraska is this year, we're on this just path to see how good we could be every single day. and. It's so fun when those, all that hard work gets to pay off in those moments. There's Jordan Larson, who, as we discussed, was a part of that 2005 match. I was going to tell you, if you want to break the headband back out yes. as a broadcaster, I I'm here for it. Let's go. I like that. It's never been done before. Yeah. You just need some extra inspiration or something the next match that you do the last time washington beat nebraska in a match though was all the way back in 2010 in the ncaa sweet 16 in this building since then the last four matchups which of course were all in the ncaa tournament nebraska ended washington's season the last four times how they meet as big 10 opponents in the regular season only the second ever regular season matchup as Landfair smashes one home. Nebraska won in a sweep in 1993 in Lincoln. That was the only previous regular season battle. 1993, we're going deep in the archives for that one. Yeah, the only regular season matchup until now. It's so fun for the game of volleyball again to just get all of these like incredible matchups throughout the season and Typically the the top five teams are trying to play preseason and knowing that the only other time is going to be in the postseason And now we're just getting high-level volleyball matches throughout the year That's why Leslie Gabriel said she was talking with Oregon head coach Matt Omer about joining the Big Ten and that they're both Genuinely so happy to be in this conference because they they see that it is such a great measuring stick for their teams And it trains them really well for their ultimate postseason goals Yeah, I mean great teams want to play great teams and you want to be in the arena It's the only way to figure out how good you can be and unlock these things Individually and as a team is to, to get reps in typical environments Jackson, 
Washington coming out looking a little more poised here, even though it's early. that open sometimes you know great pins usually hit high hands and so middle backs got to be a little bit deep to run those balls down and these guys are hitting at such a high level you're ready for that hard driven ball that was hit hard right off the block by Andy Jackson again one thing I love about Andy Jackson is she has a way of finding space but she also doesn't avoid the block and even a middle is gonna try to hit some edges there put a lot of pressure on Washington she executes that so well Jackson now four for seven with that kill. Hunt on the slide. That's in. It's blocked by Murray. Woo! Big block by Murray. Offensively, defensively, she's playing such a great all-around game tonight. You notice what makes her a great blocker is not that she's not only that she's so physical, but her eye work is so disciplined. And it's so obvious to see Nebraska train that at a high level. Julia Hunt, no kills, three errors. She's a really, really talented freshman for Washington, Nebraska, completely keeping her in check. Her Huskies ball control hasn't been great either. You need ball control in order to set your middles well. Absolutely, especially on an off-speed ball or a roll shot. We got to take advantage of that on both sides if they want to win this match. serve Merritt Beeson Washington still doesn't have an ace that is the fifth for the Cornhuskers yeah it's a great serve by Beeson and also Washington's in row four so Molly Wilson is making a long move she's got to get stopped a little bit earlier so she can see and go get that ball you see Wilson in front of the referee on the far side she has to come across the court once the point starts is what you're saying to be in proper position as the setter. Here's Wilson. And a miss hit by Bush. And the Huskies hoping things don't get away from them early again. Yeah, I love how BC competes. She's bringing the heat, the intensity, the joy to every single play. And again, this play from Washington in rotation four, it's really tough when you're running from row four as a setter and the serve is going to position one. Kind of coming over your shoulder. And you see a result like that. Bergen Riley scores. And she stays perfect at three for three. Washington cannot get out of this rotation. Yeah, and this is what great teams do. They're finding a weakness and they're going at it. And they're going to keep doing it until Washington figures out a way to get out of this. First appearance for Brooke Heward since September 28th. The daughter of Damon Heward, the niece of Brock Heward, both former Washington and NFL quarterbacks she's in in serve receive as the Huskies try and side out Rodriguez scoops it up Beast and they like setting her on the pick Bush puts it down finally a side out for Washington great effort on both sides of the net Washington is doing a good job of being a little bit more creative offensively using some offbeat shots to not only score, but also if, if Nebraska ends up digging that, it's a little harder to stay in rhythm. And in a 5 nothing run. <laughs> Little pump fake there on the line judge call, but it was in by Murray. Leslie Gabriel has already used one challenge and she's going to use her second here. That play by Bergen Riley is so efficient. She gets that ball and keeps her hitter in rhythm. 
I don't know if we can tell from that view. Just an in out challenge. Pretty cut and dried. We'll see if we can get a look. One thing you've mentioned with Coach Gabriel, though, Courtney, is that she she's trying to restore a sense of tradition from a playing style perspective. As we'll hear the call here first. Oh. Well, we didn't hear, but it was a quick review, and the ruling stood. Well, no, the ruling was overturned. Oh. It was out, Point Huskies. I stand corrected, but yeah, Coach Gabriel's done a great job of really bringing kind of the essence of Washington Volleyball, serving tough, really disciplined, taking good high-risk swings, and also making it her own, you know, and, and taking this program to a level hopefully it's never been before. They snapped a streak of 21 straight NCAA tournament appearances last season by falling short of them. So many players from the year before, like Claire Hoffman, Marin Grote, Ella May Powell, took a year to adjust, especially with a brand new staff in, except for, of course, Coach Gabriel, who had been an assistant. Audra Wilmes with the kill. It's so fun to see a program get some big wins, you know, and streak, put them together. And they're just playing good ball ball, you can see here. Wilson does a nice job, that pass off the net, keeping her hitter in rhythm. Let's see if they can keep that going. Excellent. Great run by Bergen Riley. Making out the middle, that's always fun when you create a... Making out the middle, that's always fun when you create a... She's going to go over, but she finds Andy Jackson. Probably a good choice to throw back to her. Was there something she did mechanically that you saw that would draw the middle like that? As this time Nebraska reads it well. well it's one of the reasons early if you're an offensive setter you want to throw some dumps in there, one-handed, two-handed, just so it gives one more thing for the block to have to think about, you know? You got to think about a lot when you're going up against this Nebraska yeah. team. So by or. Andra Wilmes terminates. Wilmes now with eight kills. It's a great side out by Washington in row six. They've gotten stuck a few times, and that's when Bush has been coming around and swinging on that D. For them to side out early in that row is really great for them. Huskies' pins have not been that bad. They, they have some kills. Wilmes and Fletcher both fairly efficient as well. Bush less efficient, but with ten kills to lead the team. The, the Huskies have not gotten their middles going at all today. And out of system attack, Wilmus cannot connect. Yeah, and you know, the game's won and lost at the pin just because of the uh, a number of swings. You know, you're passing well, you're setting your pins a lot, and for sure, if you're out of system, they're getting all of the swings. But you need the middles to be in there to kind of disrupt the defense and give, again, give them a lot to think about. And regardless, the one thing that really has happened tonight is Nebraska's offense has not been stopped. Wilmus continues her day hitting close to 300 with nine kills. But how does Washington try? What adjustments could you foresee to, to try and cut into this deficit and put a stop to this from Nebraska hitting 444? Yeah, it's tough when they're passing this well. Again, it goes back to serve and pass, but something about Nebraska is even when they're and like that's a perfect example. It's a tight pass, but Bergen Riley, her eye work and discipline, are, she's so efficient in her movement pattern. She gets to that ball, puts up a hittable ball for her for her hitter. It's like they have all these fail safes. They're such a good passing yes. team, but even on the the imperfect pass, you just described what the response would be. Push out a system. Lexi Rodriguez, Harper Murray. Try to use that block, but it came down in bounds. Yeah, that, that one's a little riskier. It's an inside set, so she's doing that white move that typically when you're at the pin, that ball would be out. But because she's so far inside, 
This one lands Washington's way. Good discipline by Fletcher on that ball. Hayes likes to serve, going away from her arm side, just like that. Oh, everything Harper Murray's doing seems to be working at the moment. Yeah, that's what's so tough about Harper Murray is her range, and she makes all these really difficult swings. She doesn't even get an approach on that ball. She finds a way to put pressure on the other team. With the exception of the, the point we just saw with the wipe attempts. Murray hitting 500 with 12 kills. Fletcher gets one to the floor. We haven't seen too many clean side outs from Washington in this set, but that's a nice rhythm that they're finding. They're going to need a lot more first ball side outs if they want to make a run here in set three. Yeah, Nebraska scoring on more than 50% of their serves, which is a very sterling number for the Cornhuskers. Beast in the miss, and hey, good by Washington here. They haven't had to use an early timeout. They've been hanging around just enough as we get toward this auto 15-point timeout. And I love that. Throwing in a little 6-2 rotation here with Howie Servin. Fun to see her come on the court and, and make a big difference right away. A good serve, but Hunt was not ready for the overpass. A really bad mistake by the freshman middle right there. Got to take advantage of that opportunity against the Cornhuskers. It all starts Thursday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Really getting down the stretch run of this regular season, getting deeper into November. The only unbeaten team left now after Penn State was swept by Wisconsin earlier today. Nebraska, in fact, they're the only unbeaten team in any power conference in league play. Great job keeping up by the Huskies. Howry. It's Torino now into the match with the kill. Yeah. The loudest the crowd has been tonight. This place is rocking. Sometimes you just gotta find a way. Whatever that takes to see find a way. Whatever that takes to see Washington trying to hit out of the back row, and then we got a kick over the net. Ultimately, Tolino with a great swing to finish out a tough rally. Jackson tries to silence the crowd. Cannot. This is high. One of the things that's so fun about volleyball is that you can just feel so tangibly the momentum shift. And Washington hasn't had it for a while. Nice to see them compete right now. Four out of the last five points for the Dogs. Until now. Well, Leslie Gabriel wants to challenge this. Going to challenge that in-out call. I love that repeat. Andy Jackson hit one long. Berger Riley says, I'll give it right back to you. Nice way to build up some confidence. The original decision is that the ball is in point Nebraska. Washington is challenging that the ball's out. This is going to be important. You know, the, this subtle shift, though, that you mentioned, that... One thing that I think some Big Ten opponents will learn is we saw it in the Pac-12. There would be plenty of top-ranked opponents that would come into this building. The call is confirmed. The ball is in. Nebraska will retain the point. Washington will lose their challenge, and they're out of challenges. Yeah, these last two refuse to be quick. But um, teams will come in here, and all of a sudden, things will start to slip away a little bit. And it's, this is a very tough place to play. Yeah, great energy tonight. You can feel the crowd. And how cool for a city, you know, to break an attendance record and for these athletes to get supported in this way. It's cool for everyone. There were a lot of years where Washington, and again, they've been slightly down the last couple of years. Leslie Gabriel trying to build it back up. There were a lot of years where they did not lose very often here. Yeah, great home court advantage here in Washington. Andy Jackson getting up there, throwing it down. Looks like she 
just hung in the air there for a while. Great read by her, great discipline. So those overpasses, it's an easy one to kind of flub or hit the net. She does a nice job of staying patient. And to your point, we saw Washington struggle with an overpass going into that timeout. That was a key moment. Riley to Landfair. Oh, pulls the string on that one. Howry with a great effort on that play, just couldn't quite execute it. Again, it's so tough to defend when you're playing that deep line shot. That road trip, this one road trip alone, they have set a school attendance record three different times. Yeah, it's incredible what they're doing for the sport of volleyball. We're starting with that match in Nebraska, over 90,000 people in an outdoor match. Pretty special of what they're representing and, and what they're bringing, the community they're bringing into the sport. Feels like the game is growing right now at a rapid pace. And Nebraska is a huge part of that. What's special about Nebraska fans, too, is that they just know the game of volleyball. You know, they, they grow up watching it on TV, and I think that's the effect we're going to see. It's on TV a lot more. We've got three professional leagues coming to the U.S. Just a really fun time for our sport when kids are watching it more and more they're going to start playing at a higher level at a younger age and they should model themselves after someone like bergen riley and she makes that one look real easy it's tough to defend because she goes up just like she's going to set and again her mechanics are so consistent but it's really tough to read where she's setting much less if she's going to throw that over the net three times south dakota gatorade player of the year Sophomore season, Bergen Riley. <laughs> Sophia Toledo into the block there, and Nebraska hitting cruise control right now. This is serving sub Macy Bosiger getting a look late in the third set for John Cook, four time national champion head coach. Fair, letting one loose. Timeout, Time Huskies. Right in the kitchen, she's getting all over that one. Great swing by Landfair again. She's been hitting that inside she, that you play night in and night out, regardless of who's on the other side of the net. And Nebraska's clearly doing that tonight. Hitting over 400 for the match so far. Once again, they're outside for the second straight game in this Pacific Northwest trip. Murray and Landfair have led the way. Extremely high volume and efficient. A rare combination. A rare miss from Landfair. We'll be our second on the night. A great dig by Choboy on that ball. How fun for Alexis Howery. Freshman setter for Washington comes in. Record-breaking crowd getting to play one of the top teams in the country. It's awesome to see how she was competing out there, did a great job stepping in for the dogs. It had gone to the 5 1 the last couple of matches with Wilson, but Howery's been a key player this year. Great recruit coming in for Coach Gabriel Bergen Riley. She's been killing the ball today. Bergen Riley with another one down is 5 for 6. She's casually swinging over 800 as a setter. I like that. She goes over on two, throws it on one a little more aggressively. Really dynamic player. Don't Cook says she just does everything well. That's one of her many gifts. And she's a great setter, just that part. Many gifts. And she's a great setter, just that part alone. But she's a great all around player. Quick running. Merritt Beeson into the deep corner. It's a little bit like a quarterback, you know? You can be accurate, but maybe you don't have the hit factor, kind of this knack to know where a defense is going and who's hot. And Bergen Riley does such a great job of feeling the game. I'm excited to see where she chooses to go with her career. This crowd trying to find one last push. Hewan Fletcher to the ground. 
Washington finding these pockets of great plays, and they're just having a hard time staying at that level point in and point out. As they wrap up their season and head into postseason, that's what they're going to have to work on is how do we raise this bar? How do we stay a little bit more consistent? Consistent. We practiced yesterday, and they've been missing Kirsten Barton for a couple of matches now, fortunately got hurt in the fifth set. In the middle of that fifth set, they still, fifth set, in the middle of that fifth set, they still, Toyota on the way without Barton. And Ensley gets hurt as well. So tough to face Nebraska with those two out. Beeson, block contact, so it's match point for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, the dogs have been battling in the crowd. Got a good show tonight. See Nebraska get after it, and, and these Huskies are going to continue to get, to get better and better. And these Huskies are going to continue to get, to get better and better. Washington has a tough schedule remaining as well. One more for Wessels. You love to see that. Just competing. We don't care what score it is. We're going to do what we do. Wessels taking a really good swing on Nebraska's match point. So this is a good rotation right now for Washington. A great server in Bays and both Hunt and Bush in front with three hitters. And Bays to aces Rodriguez, their first ace as a team of the night. We love that match point for Nebraska and Washington still serving aggressively and they're going for it. That's the what Coach Gabriel said she loves about this team is that they fight, they love to compete, they love when it's hard, and we're seeing that right now. Timeout. John Cook heads. That's what Coach Gabriel was telling us about. Kind of wants to be the spirit of her team. Make everyone else prove it. Make them compete. Washington volleyball history. Match point once again. Bays Diggs. Murray. And we continue on here in Alaska Airlines Arena. Just battling and the crowd is absolutely loving it here. Pretty special night for volleyball in Seattle, Washington. How much further can they push this? Good serve at Murray. Wilson, push. I think there was contact there. There was 24-21. Washington just digging deep and finding a way. They're extending plays defensively, putting a lot of pressure on Nebraska at the service line. And of course, taking advantage of that. Molly Wilson put up a great ball. 4 nothing run. Murray for the match. Bay saves it. Bush keeps it in. Alex says good night. Nebraska wins in three. Remains the only conference unbeaten amongst the power. Not being the color of Putibaram.